Praise the Lord. God bless you. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. It is so good to be doing this Facebook Live with all of you. God bless you. And I'm just waiting for everybody to get in. Amen. I'm going to be talking a little bit, amen, about dealing with being taken for granted by others. And we are going to actually enjoy doing this with this Facebook Live. You know, some of you are coming on, on YouTube. Some of you are coming on our Vimeo.com. We appreciate you. Amen. And we just give God the praise and the glory for you guys. God bless you. Amen. And I trust that this message be a blessing to you. You know, the Bible talked about in the book of Timothy, said that the time would come when men would be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. And then also the Bible talks about how that we that are born again, we did a blood wash. Amen. We are people that are supposed to reach out, be a help to others. But there is another side to the story. And I want today to talk to y'all about it. Amen. And what I'm going to be talking to y'all about is dealing with being taken for granted by others. And what I'm talking about this morning is the spiritual and emotional effects it has on the person that this is being done to. And I'm going to try to show you some ways to pull out. Now, let me say something here. As a believer, I believe that the Word of God teaches us to help, to support, and to be there to help others. I mean, I believe that that is a, just a, a commandment in the Word of God. But do you know Amen. That there is a place in life and in God where and you can be a help and you can be a strength. But sometimes there are people who actually that you love who actually don't realize they're doing it, but they feel entitled to what you're doing for them. And it turns into an emotional stronghold that pulls against your life. So I'm going to talk about that today. Amen. And I want to tell you a little story up front. Good morning, Terry Fields. God bless you. Appreciate you. Thank you for coming in. I trust that the sound that we got right now is coming in nice and strong. Amen. I was with my one of my sons in the gospel of Mississippi, Apostle Stephen Woods. And I was we were driving back to the airport. And I started talking to him. And I said, Stephen, I said, I'm going to talk to you about a message that I would love to preach and minister on and talk to and, uh, people about. And that message was where you are an individual who knows that it is right to help people. It is right to do things for family. It is right to be a finisher, one who is able to do things and get it done. But the trouble you're facing is the people that you love and do things for sort of have taken it for granted. Good morning, Pastor Apostle George Pearson. Meaning this, a man, now I'm, right now I'm talking from a man's point of view because me and Apostle Stephen Woods, we guys were just riding back to the airport. I said, you know, Stephen, I said, that is a strange place in life when you are a provider, male or female now, but, but hear what I'm saying. You are a provider. You get things done. Everybody depends upon you, and you actually produce. Now, listen to this, Apostle George. Where the problem comes is when you're doing all of these things, and the people that you're doing them for seems to feel that they are entitled to it, and they start taking you for granted. Now, in, in the biblical terms, and I know somebody's going to to give me a message and write me and say, well, the Bible says you're supposed to take care of your family. You're supposed to take care of this and that. That is not what I'm coming against. I repeat, I repeat, I repeat. <laughs> that is not what I'm speaking against. What I'm talking about is the frustration that faithful, reliable, you can count on people go through in their families, and even on their jobs, wherein they are available, they're reliable, but people have taken them for granted. And when I said that to Apostle Stephen Woods, I said, man, I said, listen, when a man feels this, he feels like, look, I, I get it when you talk about the deadbeat dad. I'm just using these terms people use. I get it when you're talking about uh, the man that's not there. What about the guy that is? 
And when I was saying this to him, we were just talking man to man. Believe you, in a minute, I'm going to talk about sisters that had this same problem, women that had this same feeling. And I was saying to him, I said, the most hardest thing to face when you are reliable, responsible, you can be counted on, you are, you are there for the family, that you're there for the job, they can rely on you. The most hardest thing to actually voice out against the frustration is when you begin to feel that you're being absolutely taken for granted and nobody sees it. In other words, they literally can count on you being available, being reliable, but they don't see it. And actually, what they do is they act as if they are taking you for granted or they feel entitled. The word entitled means it's a belief that one is deserving or entitled to a certain privilege. And in this case, with your life. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Now, leaving the the the, the airport trip from Apostle Stephen, uh, Stephen uh, and myself, Apostle Woods and myself, about a few days ago, uh, me and another uh, another sister in the Lord, a woman of God, she called and said, Apostle, I'm very depressed. I am going through a great deal. I feel so stressed. And I said to her, darling, I said, what is going on? And my precious sister in the Lord said these words, in my family, I take care of everything. They can rely on me. I make myself available. I even end up pressing beyond measure. And, and she says, but the, but the problem that I have, Apostle, is I'm getting aggravated and frustrated because everybody brings everything to me because they know that I will get it done and I'm reliable. But they, once they get what they want out of me, it doesn't seem that they even acknowledges me. What this sister was suffering from was the same thing that myself and Apostle Stephen Woods was talking about. As guys, as good husbands, as, as fathers. Do you understand me? She was saying the same thing. That the things that she does... For people, she was not expecting them to roll over backwards or them to uh, 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 have a parade for her. But to the simple acknowledgement, the simple thank you, the simple gratitude, and not take her for granted. Now, some of you that are listening at this, you are right in this place that I'm talking about. I said this on Facebook. I put this up. Being wanted because you're needed falls short from being wanted because you're loved and respected. I'm going to say this one more time. Being wanted because you are needed falls short from being wanted because you're loved and respected. It, there's a possibility that on your job, and even in your family sometimes, you can be wanted because you're needed, but not feel from them the love and respect. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm not saying here we shouldn't do for family. Don't email me this ridiculousness because I would be an absolute idiot and I'm a very wise man. I get it. But I'm saying to you, just like some men feel this way who are there, but they act, but sometimes the family acts as if all they want out of them is what they can get, but show no gratitude, no appreciation, but feel and act as if they're entitled. This happens to male or female. This happens in marriages. Sometimes you're in a marriage where the person takes you for granted. They treat you a certain way. They don't acknowledge you a certain way. They depend on you, rely on you, and even put on you. But they don't realize that they are not showing any love and respect for you. In this particular case with my sister that called, my sister in the Lord that called and was talking about this, she was saying, my family sometimes 
dumps everything on me, even the things that we're supposed to do to help in the family. Now, I'm trying not to get deep into that person's business, but there were things that when the family was needed to help with mom, with their mother, they would put it on her. They would say, well, yeah, well, I'll be by, and you could not rely on them. Um, in other words, when you are a reliable person and people take you for granted, if they even talked about being committed to do something to help you or on your behalf, they will bounce. They will leave. They will not be there. Their mother was sick. She was taking care of the mom. Others in the family would not put the time in even to give her a break. Why? Because they know she got it. In other words, when people take you for granted, in their minds, they feel like, you got it. You don't need no help. So, so do understand, what I'm talking about in this message is, I'm trying to teach people how to come out of this cycle. How to emotionally and spiritually come out of this cycle. Now, I'm going to tell you something. The emotional effects of this thing is, as it keeps happening to your life, you will become angry. You will become bitter and you will begin to feel the emotional feeling of hating doing what the Bible says we're supposed to do. Now, get me what I'm saying. As a Christian, you will have a dual battle on the inside of you because there is a part of you that is supposed that the Bible says to, to be available, to, to help, to embrace, to be available as much as in you. But you will have another battle in you that's saying, I'm doing all of that, but the people in my circle, on my job, in my family, does not reciprocate the same thing. What they do is they come to me or you dumping more on you and never realizing that they're taking you for granted. Now, once again, I know Christianity. Somebody is going to come up with the little Christian pet answer. Thank you much. Not going to help them. I'll be honest with you. Well, you know, the word says to help people. That's not what the problem is. The problem is that they have, for some reason, created a culture around their life that has forgotten that they are taking them for granted. In other words, there. It, listen, it is one thing not to have an ability. It is one thing not to be able to supply financially or emotionally people. That is one thing. But the ones who have the grace to actually not only take care of their own life, but the strength by God's grace to take care of the lives of others, the danger to you, I'm going to say it again, the ones who have the ability by the grace of God, and we give God all the praise. That, they, that has an ability. Your life is organized. You are a finisher. You are a worker. You get it done. You, you, you attract finances. You are a go-getter. You finish, I mean, on the job, you're the one that, like, they know you're the go-to person on the job. At the church, you work in a ministry. Everybody relies, to, relies on you, comes to you, and pulls off of you. The thing that you will battle is feeling sometimes that there are people who are taking you for granted. When they take you for granted, they put on you and forget that you have a life too. When they, they listen, and the people that do this to you are not always evil. I say this again. Now, the reason why I'm carefully doing this, because with church people, I don't mean no harm, and I've been saved for well over 50 years. But church people, when it comes dealing with reality, we tend to say these spiritual cliches. You know, God's given me the strength, the anointing to do it. Yeah, right. Yeah, great. I get it. Yeah, right. But you know doggone well you feel this. You know right well that you've been feeling as if, glory be to God, that some folks are pulling on you, dumping on you, using you for what they want, and you're setting up going to them, hey, you come to me only when you want something. You pull on me and what have you. But at the same time, after you're finished, you don't even acknowledge I'm in the room. That's why I say 
be, uh, listen, listen, it's one thing of being wanted because you're needed. It falls short from being wanted because you're loved, and I use that word, respected. Now, let's look at some of the emotional effects and impact that this has. Number one, you need to acknowledge that it is important to voice and express this opinion. Hear me? You need to acknowledge it. You need to sit down and not get all mad with people. The way you start engaging this is saying, look, wait a minute. Hold it. I'm beginning to feel like you know, this can happen even in your house. If you were to actually say, look, I love all of y'all, but sometimes I think that y'all take me for granted. I, I've seen this in mothers. I've seen this in mothers. Where in they're doing everything around the house. They're taking care of everybody. I mean, they're going to work. They're doing everything. That folks won't pick up their clothes. Folks won't do what they can. They leave stuff all around. And it's because they have grown accustomed to not having to, to follow up on things because you got it. That attitude of you got it can become such a burden. It is, is any of these ladies out here understanding what I'm saying? In other words, you sit back. And you look at the family God has blessed you with, and you thank Jesus and three angels that you have this wonderful children. You have the family. You love them, love them, love them, love them. Yes, you love them dearly. But you sit back sometimes and look at them and go like, why do you all dump everything, leave everything the way it is, don't deal, do your responsibility, and you expect me to do it? And the reason why they do it is because in their be without them realizing it, they have taken you for granted. You work in an office. In the office you work in, you're reliable. You they they and they start dumping more on you. They dump your they, they you're doing your work and other stuff they're dumping on you. And you can keep taking it. Why? Because they know you can get her done. And the only thing that the supervisor and some of the workers feel is, bring it, I'm going to use a fictitious name. No, I'll use, bring it to Evelyn on the job. Evelyn can get it done. So here is Evelyn working on this job. She has the things that is her immediate job and work to do. But everybody starts dumping and adding stuff to Evelyn. The only problem is, Evelyn started doing it when they would start get putting it on her. I'm talking about stuff that she don't really have to do. After a while, instead of the office appreciating Evelyn doing what she's doing, they take it for granted. Now, they take it for granted and don't give her a raise. They take it for granted and don't acknowledge her in any special way. Sometimes they take it for granted and not even give her a break. Do you know why? Because everything is functioning just fine. As long as Evelyn just allows stuff to be dumped on her. Now, somebody would go, Brother Hopkins, what wisdom do you have for Evelyn coming out of that cycle? Well, number one, it be, when you create a culture, listen to me. When you create a culture by not addressing an issue, then you'll have to start take back your life. And you may have to do it like eating an elephant small bites at a time. Some of you that are listening at me, I'm going to give you wisdom. You can either pay for a counseling session with me and we go over this stuff or thank me on this live video for giving you some insight on how to take your life back from those who take you for granted. Or you don't have to get nasty about it because most of the time when we so-called take our lives back, we don't explode. Are you hearing me? So, listen, I'm trying to tell you. You get so mad, where well, you just go off on somebody. And that ain't going to work. Matter of fact, that only perpetuates more problems. What Evelyn needs to do on that situation, whether it's around the house or on the job, she needs to address it. One. In other words, take her right to address it. Now, number two, suppose you have people that, well, if I say anything, it's going to be a big deal. I don't want to start with this. You bring, they bring you something that is not yours to do. Tell them right now, my plate is full. I'm not able to do it. Did you hear what you just said? Right now, my plate is full. 
I'm unable to do it. Now, I'm going to tell you why you won't tell them that. The reason why you won't tell them that your plate is full and you're unable to do it, because in you, not only is there a finishing grace and a finishing anointing, and, and with that, and which is your, that is your strength, but in you also is a part of where you want to please people. The, some of the people that I counsel who have allowed others to take them for granted or feel entitled to using them, they don't want to say no. Why? Because they're afraid that someone is going to get upset. You know, just a, about a few minutes ago, Evelyn and I was setting up chatting, and this is early in the morning. Around three in the morning, I was sitting talking to her, preparing for this Facebook Live. And I said to Evelyn, honey, you know one thing, baby? I said, when people, human nature, can we talk? Human nature operates like this, guys. If a person is, uh, is, is getting an advantage by what they get out of you, they are not going to stop. If what they put on you helps them to have what they want out of it, they're not going to stop. So the only one that's going to stop you from being taken for granted is you by start drawing back smallly. I, I, what I do when I do counseling with people who go through this stage here where they feel taken for granted, where everybody's dumping everything on them, I realize that if you did to try to do it all at once, it would be a mess. What you start doing is slowly allowing people to be responsible for things for themselves. Yes, yeah, you can actually help them. Now hear what I'm saying. You actually have the ability to help them, but the best help you can give them is to start allowing them to help themselves. I know I'm messing people up. If I don't do it, it'll never get done. Do you know one thing? I'm going to tell you something. If you if if if, if I died five o'clock this morning, and, and, and I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Y'all y'all are going to mourn me. Some of you are going to miss me, and y'all are going to keep right on doing. And guess what? Whatever I used to do, whatever job I used to do, somebody's going to step up and get it done. And that's the truth on your job. That's the truth in your family. That's the truth in life. Often we don't tell people no because we don't want to lose their favor. We don't want to disappoint them. You don't, as we say, but they gonna be mad. Of course, now look, look, you're talking about your life. Here you are, angry, frustrated, burnt out, and they gonna be mad. Well, you already mad. You already angry. When really it's because you did not speak up. So remember that sometimes. You will be taken for granted, and you have to let people know. And you ain't got to say, you're taking me for granted. No. No. Wise people don't, don't come with a full frontal assault. Wise people go with, uh, right, I'm unable to do that right now, or I don't have the time, or excuse me, I, I, I'm still working on the last stuff y'all gave me. See? See? When it comes to family, uh, you know what? I'm not cleaning. I'm not picking that stuff up in the room. When you get back from school, y'all pick it up. By the way, you don't have the clothes or whatever where they're supposed to be, like I tell you, to get them washed. Guess what? Let's see how they stack up when I don't touch them. You got to start. Uh, when you feel taken for granted, you start. To, you got to start taking yourself back. Did you hear me? You got to start taking yourself back rather than just get angry. So understand this, the difference between focusing on the negative feelings. In other words, focusing on the anger, focusing on the frustration. Amen. Because by the time you get to the point where you focus on that frustration, you're mad. You're upset. Or is any of you hearing me? I hope this helps somebody out there listening at me. Because really, notice that term that we say, I feel taken for granted. Then if you have been taken for granted, then take yourself back. Are you hearing me? Then take yourself back. And the beginning of it is stop giving in to what everybody is taking you for granted with. Stop giving in to it. Are you hearing me? Address it. Now, I'm going to tell you this. You're not going to get away. People will continue to do to you what you won't say anything about. 
I told y'all many, uh, many of you that have heard me in teachings actually saw how Evelyn set the pace in our marriage. We were newlyweds. I, uh, we hadn't been married a week, I think. And she was at the stove cooking in uh, some kind of way I talked to her. And it was disrespectful. I don't even know what I said then and what happened because you're going back 40 years. But all I do remember the stuff. I don't remember what I said, but I remember what she did. She turned around and let me know clearly that she will not respond to me talking to her like that. And she said, when you do, I will not have a conversation or interact with you if you're going to talk to me like that because I'm not having that. And that set the pace for how I talked to her. Now, I don't even remember exactly what I said, but I remember this one thing. Evelyn took back her power. You got to take back your power. But it, the family will be mad. Of course they're going to be mad. Because you're changing the dynamics of what they do and what they want out of you. And the, the, the people on the job are going to get mad. They're going to get mad. Listen, here we go. I don't want them to get mad for constantly dumping things on me. I don't want them to get mad for constantly putting work time on me while they let others with attitudes go free. I'm the easy mark. Because sometimes the reason why people take you for granted, hear me my heart, is because you're easy. You're easy mark. You're easy. Now, this don't mean go to a job or at home be difficult. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not ignorant. I'm saying to you, the reason why this has happened to you is because you have allowed it. It's easier. It's easy to pull you in because what they tap into is your moral value about finishing things. Your moral value about committed to things. Your moral value about how you deal and handle with people. Some people will tap into that and know that I'll just come around to you when I want something out of you and I know how to get you to respond. I'll make you respond by making you feel guilty about saying no when you got too much on you already. Make you feel guilty when we don't even act like we appreciate what you do. Are you hearing me? People, you have to slowly start taking that back. Let me see what I've got in these notes. I hope this is helping somebody. Now, these teachings here, amen, why do I teach some of this stuff? Although I teach deliverance and all of that, I, I'm a counselor as well. I help people actually navigate through problems like this. And I'm telling you, there are many people who feel that they have been taken for granted and this cycle can only be broken by you. Yes, you say, well, I'm just waiting for Jesus to change them. Yeah, and Jesus is waiting for all the race, to, all the human race to get saved. And there is will and choice operating in there. And there are some people who, who, who have a will and a choice to continue operating with you the way they are. Sometimes you have to take yourself back. It's almost like Nehemiah. When Sanballat and Tobiah came to frustrate him on that wall at work, Nehemiah told them, hey, I'm about a good work. And I'm not coming down. Why should we leave what we are doing to come down to you? Stop allowing people to pull you down to where they want you to be. Are you hearing me? Nehemiah didn't say, well, I'm going to pray to God the Father. And maybe he'll make old sand ballot and them leave me alone. No. Nehemiah knew he had to take the initiative. Listen at me well. You don't have to be mean. You don't have to be nasty. But you have to learn, like Nehemiah, to let them know, I'm not coming down. I am not doing this right now. I don't feel like it. You know, you, how, many, how many times have you said yes and hated that you did? Okay, I'll do it. Thank you. They get real, real happy. And they go off and they give you that smirk, that funny little grin. Have you had that funny little grin when somebody goes, gotcha? Have you ever had that one? Yeah. Most people got people in your lives. <laughs> that after the, when they set you up and, and, and play your play your uh play play you like this, they look at you and go, gotcha. And then they proceed, and there you are doing something that you neither want to do nor have any joy of it. But my dear friend, you'll have to start taking yourself back. And the reason why it happens because you are are reliable. At times you will, you will become angry, 
frustrated and annoyed. And that's the sign to show you that it's best to do something about this because it's becoming an emotional stronghold. Uh, right, I'm not saying you need deliverance, but you do need a change. And this will not stop because you're the one enabling it. It will not stop until you take and do something to stop it. And, and, and it may be just like that, the sister with the situation with her mom that others wouldn't help with her at all and, uh, and this type of thing. She could not stop helping her mom. But I'll tell you what she could stop. She could stop some of the other stuff that they put on her for. Now you say, brother, are you telling her get them back? No. If you can't rely on them for any help, why would you let someone you can't rely on to be there for any help to come and bring more work on you, come and bring more demands on you? But she not only was doing everything in the family, those who would not help her, she felt guilty when she didn't help them. She said, but I'm the strong one. I said, mm -hmm. I said, yeah, how's that working for you? You're saying, I'm the strong one in the family. I'm the one that's got strength and I can help everybody. Now, and you should, and you should help them with the feelings and the emotion of appreciation, led and want to. Appreciation, led and want to. That becomes a joy with what you do. But when what you're doing is unappreciated and you are disrespected, and you are not acknowledged, it causes you eventually, because emotions don't lie to you, sweetheart. Your human nature and emotions will say after a while, you know what, I'm getting sick and tired of everybody asking me for something. And what will happen is, listen to me, the danger. You will actually go off on somebody who actually is not trying to use you, but because you have gone through being taken for granted, Someone will come up and ask you something. Could be one of the kids. Mommy, can I? And you turn around and say, why don't you just learn how to do something yourself? Or, or you might come home from work and your mate says to you, honey, uh, such and such a thing. My God, can y'all just give me a break? And the frustration that took place was not what they asked you to do was because you have been taken for granted at work. It has been nothing but a hassle on you. Are you hearing me? And it has built up. So some of the things that goes with it is you will become angry, frustrated, and annoyed. I say it again. Angry, frustrated, and annoyed. And one, one other thing is it causes you to be stressed out, pressured, and burnt out. And you will feel that you're being used. And are you hearing me? And in reality, you are. But the intention is... In some cases, not all. The intention sometimes of what people do to us is not because they're bad people. And there is bad people in the world. Believe you me, there are bad people in the world that will use you. But sometimes when it comes to family, even sometimes on the job unintentionally, they do this because you never said a word. But yes, I talk to church staff. And they have felt that same way. Look, I've got a, a, my, my chief son who pastors the church and what have you, Apostle Bailey. One time he had to sit down with me and actually have a come to Jesus with me. And he told me exactly how I made him feel. He didn't go backbiting me. He didn't go trying to put me down. He made it quite clear to me that the way you're doing this, this, and this actually makes me feel like you don't appreciate me. And guess what? I sat and listened. And guess what? He's still with me today. Sometimes people who feel that folks are feeling entitled to them and taking them for granted, sometimes that's why they leave jobs. Yep. Some of you that have left jobs because on that job, they dumped on you and didn't appreciate you. They, they, they gave accolades of praise, respect, and honor to somebody that was lazy, shiftless, and unreliable, but not you. You, you performed what you were supposed to do and got no respect, no appreciation. And after a while, you said, you know what? I'm leaving this job. And I'm being nice talking about the job because I've seen marriages break up. Look at me. I'm not validating divorce. I'm, I'm, I'm validating reality. 
Hello, I know that's a missing link in people's lives nowadays, reality and truth. But reality and truth is that I know that if I don't show Evelyn appreciation, if she doesn't show me respect and appreciation, I don't show her respect and appreciation, I can end up either losing her emotionally at first, or I can end up losing her, period. And I've seen marriages where in a person says, you know what? I do and do and do, and it's never enough for you. It's all about you. When these people actually take you for granted and feel entitled, you, you do and do. When you look at your life, it's all about them. So many of y'all are calling me talking about narcissistic, narcissistic people, self-centered, narcissistic people that are in your life. When that type of person is in your life, they, it, it gets all drama, all, 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 all troops on deck when it's about them. And when it's about you, they disregard it. They're not there. They're unreliable. They're emotionally unreliable. But when it's about them, everything has to stand still and the world has to evolve around them. And that relationship really won't last like that. That's the danger of when you are allowing people to take you for granted and you keep that cycle going. As I said again, you, you have to start taking yourself back in small bites, because by the time you get frustrated, angry, burnt out, I mean, just aggravated around the house or on the job or in the ministry work or whatever you're doing, you get ready to leave emotionally or you're getting ready to leave physically. I've seen this destroy folks from a man's point of view. Can I talk like a man? A man that is a provider, a man that is there for his family that you ain't got to wonder whether he's running out. You ain't got to wonder where he will be there or not. Can I tell y'all something? You better take time to let them know you appreciate it. Y'all hear me? Ladies, I say this for the women. Hey, bro, if you got a good woman, if you got a good person in your life, you better make sure that you make them know you appreciate the little things they do. You know, the other day, some of y'all saw on my Facebook page post, we had a hard week this week. It's been one one that we, me and Evelyn has been busy, 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 busy. I got up in the morning. This is just me. This is how I roll. I decided to roast a chicken, fix it up real good so Evelyn would not have to fix dinner that night. So she wouldn't have that work to do. And when, I, when she woke up, she said, what's that I smell? And I said, I roasted a chicken so dinner is already done, honey. She let me know the look in her eyes, the twinkle in her eyes, the smile on her face. And then she's even said it to me. She said, oh, that is so sweet. You did not have to do that. When a person knows and gives you an accolade of thank you, are you hearing me? And don't send me none of your Christian letters talking about you're supposed to do what you do is unto the Lord and expect no thanks in return. Well, say the same thing, payday. Say the same thing when you constantly keep doing this something for someone and they don't even have the decency to say thank you. Don't give me those pet answers. Pet answers do not heal emotional wounds. Pet answers are placebos. Those pet answers are placebos. If you're doing it for Jesus, I get it. But human nature, even God, why God the Father with his almighty and all-powerful self wants us to give him praise? Hello! Why does God want praise? Why do we get up and thank you, Lord, for another day? Why do we give him accolades of praise? And then when I say in a teaching like this that there are people that are being wounded and that are being angry and frustrated and taken for granted, you're looking at me and giving me a Christian pet answer. An intelligent person realizes that I'm dealing with an emotional situation that people are going through, trying to give sound wisdom on how to pull yourself back. You that have people that are doing, loving people that are doing things in your life or working for you or, or doing anything, take time to let them know you appreciate them. Do you know during this COVID cave that we are in, my staff, my paid staff at my church, I have done things outside of the church's money to show them our appreciation. 
to show them that we realize that during the COVID cave, y'all have been keeping things running. The deacons, you have been going in, keeping the church uh, sanitized, different things that you've been doing, and we've done things to show them appreciation. Appreciation goes a long way. People that, that you asked or don't expect a husband, expect a wife, expect an employee to just do things, actually also sometimes realize they need kudos. They need accolades of thank you. They need recognition that you saw what they did. Are you hearing me? Sometimes in a home, a father or a mother can see this thing among their children, among the family. They have a long list of demands and few acknowledgments. And that there, my friend, that some of them may do it without knowing it, but they need to understand it. With you, with us, when you're trying to get healed, ask the Father to help you to express, express your feelings and begin to start doing it. And don't rely, I'm getting ready to close now because I think I banged on this long enough. It's at 7 o'clock, I got to start counseling sessions. But listen to me real good. Brother Ivory, in conclusion, what would you say? Number one, here goes the highlight emphasis of what I was saying. Number one, when you're starting to feel this feeling where you're being taken for granted, where you feel that others are taking you for granted and act like they're entitled and what have you, process it. Don't dwell on it, but figure out how to deal with it. Start taking back part of your life. Learn the anointed word call no and his counterpart call yes. No, I am not able or I don't want to do that or yes, I can do that. Are you hearing me? Start backing stuff off of you. Well, we, got, you, we know you're off Saturday and I know you've been working for the last three weeks and whatnot, but Saturday can so-and-so come by and we just, I know you're off that day, so can we come by and do something? Well, this, this Saturday won't work. I've had to do that with, with my grand uh, my granddaughter, my little grandbaby. We were unable, because of things we were doing, to have the grandbaby to come by for the visit. Now, this weekend, uh, Aviana, I hope to have her to come by and hang out with us and the puppies and stuff. But last of uh, the week before last, no. No. Now, Brother Harvey, my God, I can't believe you said no to the grandbaby. I said no to the grandbaby because I did not have the time. If that time clock would not fit where I would be able to watch her and put the proper time in. So I said to my son, no. Are you understanding me? Now, so you have to start taking it back. With, with, when, when you've got situations where people always only come for what they want, when they come way out, rather you want to give them what they're asking for. Don't just say, I'm mad with you because you don't only, only come. To, turn around and start showing that every time they come, you're not going to give them the same response. And are you hearing me? Don't say yes. Give them what they want. Then get mad because you did. Because all you're showing is, you're showing that rather than take authority of your own life, you're left with anger in your emotions. An anger that you didn't need to be left with if you would only said, you know, I gave you $100 two weeks ago. You've never paid it back. We're not doing this again. We're not doing it this week. Are you hearing me? Sometimes you just have to start doing it. Or else people will keep repeating the same thing, the same cycle that you allowed to happen. Are you hearing me? So start taking time back. On the job. When you've got, when you know you've been given your workload and you're doing your part and what have you, even with a supervisor, can we talk? You get aside, not not going all crazy in the office. You handle your business with wisdom, with wisdom, and get, tell them we need to talk. I'm finding that y'all are giving me so much more of other people's work, and I can't keep it all going. We know you, you we know you'll go get her. We know you can get her done. No, what I want is, are you gonna have to? I can't keep this up because I can't keep my workload and theirs too at the same time. Because if you don't do that, they will dump it. Or else, if you want to, you might ask to say, you know, I'm doing quite a bit here. Uh, how about a raise? Now, if you feel the raise would be a better incentive, I mean, ain't nothing wrong with feeling appreciated with a nice raise. Hello now. 
Now let's talk about home. At home, husband or wife, at a good season, not when y'all are fussing and arguing, but at a good season, you might want to sit down one day and say, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't, I, I, I don't really think that y'all mean to make me feel this way, but can I talk? Can we talk? Um, I'm beginning to feel around here that I'm being taken for granted. Like, I know y'all love me. Now, here we go. I know y'all love me. I know y'all need me. But do you respect me? Sometimes I, I, I'm doing things around here and I'm making sure everybody's got everything tight and everybody's got everything together. Ladies, I'm going to say this to you personally. Many men wish to say this. There are some women that wish to say this. Being wanted because you're needed falls short from being wanted because you're loved and respected. Are you hearing me? I know you need me, but I can't tell that you love and respect me. I can't tell that y'all actually acknowledge what I'm doing. We well, said this is what you're supposed to be doing anyway. That's the point. You're treating me like I'm supposed to be doing it anyway, instead of treating me like you acknowledge that it is a blessing that I'm there doing it. Now, I'm going to get ready to close. My dear friend, we ask the Holy Spirit and the wisdom of God to take this video. Uh, and and no, notice it wasn't about demons and devils. And yes, I am a ghost buster. Believe you me, every single day, I'm casting demons out all over the planet. Believe you me. But... There are wisdom that is in counseling that can help you get to the root. If I cast out anger at being uh, being put, put on, frustration at being put on, uh, aggravation at being feeling people taking you for granted, I, I, sure, you could end up with spiritual strongholds there. But if I get you to deal with the root, and if I get you to examine how to start taking power back from the enemy, taking power back from what is being done or be, what you have allowed to happen in your life for years, guess what happens? It breaks the spiritual and the emotional stronghold. It can even, if it got to the point until it is a demonic stronghold, it takes away the root that these spiritual strongholds use against our lives. This is why I teach like this. Now, there are people, all oh, they want me to come out devil. Uh, it's you, but they want me to call out a demon. It's your emotion. It's your human nature, and you want me to command it to go in Jesus' name. Not going to happen. Not going to work. Are you listening at me? Remember one of the sayings I got. You don't do what you do because you got a demon. You often pick up demons because of what you're doing. Deal with the root. Amen. And you will find that the enemy won't have nothing to feed off of, and it's easier to break. Didn't say you won't need deliverance. Didn't say you won't need the healing. I said deal with the root cause. Healing and deliverance from spiritual strongholds will break. The healing will come forth much better. There is healing when you're able to say, you're, I'm going to stop this happening to my life by start saying no, by start saying I'm pulling myself back. There is healing in that rather than continue letting it happen and you getting in corners, becoming angrier and angrier. Well, guys, I'm going to get ready to go so I can go uh, get myself prepared for 7 o'clock and what have you when I start my counseling sessions today. I, I mean, Evelyn has been up since 3. We've been working on some things around our office and what have you. And I'm going to close this out like I always do. My God, my dear friends, these things that I'm sharing with you, I trust that you ask the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom, insight, and timing with them. And remember, like I always say, and God, he's still watching. God bless you.